joining us here at this beautiful church this afternoon, and hello to anyone joining us on the live stream. My name is Mira Kim. I'm the executive director of Red Cedar Chamber Music, and I also play the violin. And of course, here we have Carrie Boston, the artistic director of Red Cedar Chamber Music, and he will be playing the cello. We have a delightful program of mostly 21st century works for you today, but first we'll start with a little piece by Dvorak. one 19th century work on this all 21st century program. When Dvorak wrote that piece of music, he was considered to be the world's most famous composer. He was um, incredibly well known everywhere in Europe and in this country, and especially in Iowa, because in 1893, a year before he wrote that work, he had spent the summer in Spielville, and most of us know uh, that connection and um, probably that he wrote the American String Quartet as well as uh, the New World Symphony or at least parts of it while he was here in Iowa and it inspired him greatly. But a lot of us don't know what brought him to this country. There was this remarkable woman who in 1885 founded uh, the National Conservatory of Music in New York City. 
She felt that this young country of 109 years needed to have musical education that rivaled those of the conservatories in Europe. And so she founded this conservatory. And, you know, shockingly, she wanted to admit women and African Americans and people with disabilities. She also wanted the United States to begin having a sense of nationalism, having a sense of pride in their own music. Now, Dvorak was very famous because he was such a great nationalist. He used Czech folk songs in his music all the time. And this was happening all over Europe. Nationalism, the people heard their, their familiar tunes and they felt a sense of pride in their country. And Jeanette Thurber thought we needed to have that in America. So she brought Dvorak to lead her school and she said, we need to develop a sense of nationalism in America, in our American music. And of course, this was a young country. What was our folk music? And Dvorak comes to Iowa and what does he find? He finds Native American folk music and he finds the African American spiritual product of the hundreds of years of slave culture. And he goes back to New York and he tells his students, this is what you need to focus on. This is the way forward for American music. And in, within a couple of generations, we had a distinctly American sound in Samuel Barber and Aaron Copeland. So we have Dvorak, I think, to thank for a lot of our culture in American music. But one thing has to be um, pointed out that America is a melting pot. And for us to talk about American folk music is one thing, but really all of the music that you're going to hear today has a presence in our culture because these cultures are present here in this country. So when Mir and I decided to do this long-term project of commissioning settings of folk music for violin and cello from around the world, um, we, you know, um, wanted to celebrate our culture here by celebrating our welcoming nature. So we begin today's journey in Scotland, a rather familiar uh, tradition, traditional folk sound. Um, this is a suite by Peter Blesch. Uh, it, it has uh, four tunes in it, Loch Lomond, Argy, Sleeping Maggie, my Love is Like a Red, Red Rose, and the Apple Highlanders.
Lanier and I sent out a call for proposals, um, and we got quite a number of proposals, and we chose six composers to commission today. Four of them uh, had written for Red Cedar in the past. Peter Blesch, that you just heard, um, had written for us. But the next composer had not, but he was not unfamiliar to me because I met him as entering graduate students in the line for the Hancher commuter parking lot in 1993. And I think maybe I had some dice with me. We started playing Yahtzee and that became our yearly tradition, is to play Yahtzee on a cardboard box in the Hancher commuter parking lot line. But he's uh, here tonight, Dave Mackey, um, and uh, he became my first friend in Iowa. He and a bunch of other composers at the time um, I made the mistake of showing them, or showing Dave an extended technique, how to make a force tone, which is when you force the string in it and it pops the overtones down an octave. And so I spent the next three years of my life practicing force tones to use in their compositions. And I, I, I've never quite forgiven him for that. Um, but at any rate, um, he's been very successful. He's the head of theory and composition at the Northern Illinois University in DeKalb. And it's been great to see his wonderful success as a teacher and composer. Um, so his proposal followed his own heritage. Uh, he's, he's a Finn. And um, he went to the, the national epic of Finland. It's called the Kalevala. And it's a collection of rune songs that tell these ancient stories. Um, and usually a really simple tune like this. And um, so at any rate, but they, you know, these tales are very long. I mean, this would go on for 25, 30 minutes. So, um, but in this case, without the words, it's a minute and 45 seconds. And pretty groovy.
Our next composer actually um, had written for Red Cedar. In fact, Red Cedar Chamber Music in 2004 gave him his very first commission, his very first check to write music. And he was 18 years old at the time, Luke Gullickson. Um, he sent us a, I think he might have been the first proposal to come in. He sent us a proposal for a, a, a song from the American West. Now, some of you may know it as Goodbye Old Paint, uh, or I'm Leaving Cheyenne. Um, this was a song from, uh, from a black cowboy named Charlie Willis, who was famous on these late 19th century cattle drives across Wyoming and the, the American West. And um, he was famous because he had a great singing voice. And he, he, they, it calmed the cattle. I think it probably calmed the people too. But, but uh, this song was attributed to him. And like, uh, I guess like the, the Kalapala, these things go on and on. I mean, there are so many different verses to this. And actually people, uh, there are many different versions of the song, all with lots of verses. Um, so Luke has set this in a minimalist way. You really only get the rhythm of the piece. Um, but the, um, the, the uh, tune, or the chorus, I should say, is uh, goodbye, old paint, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old paint, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Now, you'll only hear that a couple notes at a time, just little snippets of it. But what Luke has done is spread this out so that you get a sense of these long days on long cattle drives in wide open spaces. It's really kind of hidden on it.
So next comes um, what we uh, are, have been calling one of our oldies but goodies. This work was written in 2006, um, which is actually the year I started playing uh, with Red Cedar Chamber Music as a guest artist. Um, and uh, this set um, by Harvey Solberger, we actually included as a reference for our composers in the call for proposals, and I think you'll see why. Did you mention their Czech tunes? I spaced out for a moment. Okay, so these are based on Czech folk tunes. Uh, there are three of them in a row. The first is called Sleep My Love, and you will hear a beautiful melody played by the violin and a unique accompanimental figure played in the cello. And then we will change those roles for the second piece, Flow Waters Flow, where the cello will have the melody and then the violin has a sort of interesting accompanimental figure. And then finally in the third movement, the Dudatska Polka. Uh, the Duda is a Czech bagpipe. And so the goal of the composer was to have the violin and cello sound like bagpipe and drums.
Our next piece is by Jeremiah Siochi. Uh, some of you may be familiar with his work, Tok de Azul, for violin, cello, and harp. We've played it twice in the past six years when Catherine Siochi, Jeremiah's sister, has been our guest artist on the harp. And that particular work was extremely challenging and inspired by Argentinian jazz. And uh, it so happens that Jeremiah has some Argentinian and some Filipino heritage. And so for today's piece, uh, Limang Tema, which means five themes, he chose two dances and two songs from the Philippines to incorporate into his work. Uh, the piece will start with Kulintong, which is a traditional uh, instrumental music, dance music, played on gongs and using pretty much a pentatonic type of scale. So it may sound more stereotypically Asian to our ears. Um, and that material will be reworked and brought back at the end of the piece. And in the middle of the piece, you will hear tinikling, which is the national dance of the Philippines. And this involves long bamboo poles that are uh, <laughs> that are, yes, brought together on beats one and then hit on the ground on beats two. Meanwhile, dancers are jumping and weaving in and out of the poles. And uh, this was, this dance originated during the Spanish colonial period, so you will definitely hear kind of a Western influence there. And then in between all the dances are two lovely songs. Thank you. 
They are also a violin cello duo, and because she's a composer, she's written quite a few works that they have performed, and we hope to explore those works as well in the future. But for now, we have Train. Um, Hirono loves uh, Latin American music, and so this is in the style of a Brazilian choro, and you will hear some chug, chug, chug rhythms, and also some harmonies reminiscent of a train whistle.
now it's time for the other oldie but goodie on the program from 2006. Um, Mir and I started playing together in about 1998, I think, um, as a duo. Um, but uh, in 2006, Warren Gooch wrote this um, piece you're about to hear, Three Fomanian Dances. And he wrote it for his sister, and she and a friend played the first two movements, but not the third. We gave its Iowa premiere at an Iowa Composers Forum event in Decora um, in 2006. And I think that it may be the first piece that we premiered together. Um, so since we've premiered quite a number of works. But, um, but this was uh, something we've brought back quite a bit. It's always an audience fam favorite. It's um, three folk dances from an imaginary world, Fomania. Um, fast, slow, fast. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as we enjoy playing it.
program 18 times before today and we've become so fond of this music having lived with it for how many weeks now? Once? Many weeks. Many weeks. <laughs> Who's counting? Um, so our last piece is by Stephen Cohn. He's an LA based composer, uh, Emmy Award winning. He was our composer in residence from 2017 to 2019. He's written us some beautiful works like Curfew Must Not Ring Tonight, Grace from the Chess Master with Clarinet, and Love and Life, the collaborative composition with Akwi Enji. Uh, in this case, he was inspired by the struggles and the strength of the Ukrainian people, where, you know, this moment as we speak, they are war-torn. And so he chose three Ukrainian folk songs to work together in this piece called A Culture of Courage. The first is Oh in the Meadow a Red Gelder Rose, and you'll hear us present it in a traditional manner, and then to signify youthful rebellion, it will go into a rock and roll feel, uh, and you can see Carrie playing pizzicato in the cello at that point. And then we go to a deeply moving song called Duckling Floats on Tisina. The floating duckling is a traditional Ukrainian symbol of death. Um, and the lyrics talk about a soldier wondering, you know, how he'll fare at war, if he'll get a, a decent burial, how his mother will feel if he doesn't come back. And then we move into Raise a Glass, O Brethren, a boisterous drinking song. And the piece finishes with the opening music, Oh, in the Meadow, a Red Gelder Rose. 